I really have it. There's no room for it. Hang on, Arthur. Alright, we gotta move Arthur. Come here, bud. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> okay, now you're being a worm. There we go. All right. Okay. Arthur is now reined in. Oh no, I need to get up and go Thank you. We're just gonna hang out a little bit since we know it takes anywhere between between five and eight minutes for people to get the notifications. So we're just kinda hanging out, getting ready to go. I hope you enjoyed Arthur's dance session. Very rare. Oh, I'm gonna fix the uh, palette cam for you guys real quick too. So, welcome back to, uh, what, episode 15 of Miniature Monday. Of course, we are working on our lizard man warrior here. This is uh, the little simpleton bad guy, so not the big boss. Uh, uh, this is the paint job we're looking for today. So we're going to be working with armor, doing some cool tents using auburn shadow and stuff on top of the ancient bronze. And then doing a very simple paint job on the, the scales and the skin the boss uh, this month of course in the jungle kit we're doing much more um, sort of detailed work on the scales so this is kind of like a warm-up for him last week of course we all worked on our panthers I've seen more and more people's panthers in the wild and they are looking sweet so I'm very pleased that everybody got a lot out of that sorry excuse my crusty musty hand here it's covered in uh, white primer and super glue this weekend of course on patreon we have our uh, texture class, you can see the Maggot Crown Warlock guy that we painted up. Um, this was a free uh, Patreon video that we put out for everybody, so if you wanted to see a copy of that, you can check my Facebook page, Mini Painting Studio, you can check out the YouTube channel or my Twitch, and the entire class is up there as well. So, for today, the first thing that we're going to do, since it'll take a little bit to dry, is we're going to paint all of the armor with the ancient bronze. Um, the colors that we're using today, of course, I will go ahead and pull these out. We don't need all of the core color kit. We're only going to need um, our Noir block, Black, and whatever you're using for a white. I think I have Splintered Bone out, but Linen White works the same. So we're going to have these as our two core colors from the core set. Then, of course, we have Auburn Shadow and Deep Aqua. Sorry, my bad. Uh, bright Turquoise, the complete opposite descriptor there. So this is the Auburn Shadow and the... Uh, Bright turquoise, they're the numbers for those that care. Then we also have our Olive Shadow and our Deep Twilight. You can see these here. Then we also have these two other colors. We've got Camouflage Green as well as the Abathalian Chitin, two, two fun colors. Then finally, we've got our Earth Brown and our 
boop, boop, ancient bronze on top. So that is what we are looking at today. Now then, we're going to start with ancient bronze as we begin to paint all of the armor. So uh, first time around, I, I pretty much figured out how, how we're going to want to do it. This time around, we're just going to have to kind of see uh, exactly how much wash we apply and everything like that. So I realize my chat has been pulled down too. All right, so anyway, hope everybody, oh, hope everybody is doing good. Hey, Dan. Uh, hey, M. M. Grinig and uh, Jedi Jared. How are y'all doing? Hey, Iggy. Uh, we always go live at three, so. We went out, we went a little bit early today, if I if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, it's just now three. So we went at like 2:55. Justin's here. He just uh, hasn't eaten all day today, so he is currently eating a little bit so he can hang out with us. All right, so we're gonna get started. Easiest part of the paint job here. We're just gonna start covering this guy in our ancient bronze. Let me change my focal length here as well. down there we go all right so I had to do a couple coats um, first time I did this just to make sure I had a really nice solid base so I'm gonna be doing the same thing here feel free to paint pretty much everything with this color now I am gonna leave a little bit of exposed scale there so the back of the calf as you can see. We will use, uh, oh sorry, we're using honed steel as well. That That's the other color. So if you just have a silver as well, if you don't have the core colors, you'll be okay. Because uh, some of the details we're gonna go back in and cover with a silver. Otherwise, the entire armor is going to be this color here. That's a buzz buzz. Really no reason to Xenophil highlight this miniature um, other than just making it easier for you to see uh, on camera. We're not utilizing Xenophil in any way this time around. The darker colors you're probably, go probably going to uh, notice. That's why we're going to need to do a secondary coat. So if you're somebody that primes in black like myself, that's the only real challenge for today is just making sure that we get a nice coat with this. But it's not that big of a deal. We'll be able to get everything that we need relatively simply and easily. So thanks for hanging out though. I know you guys are starting to pile in now that the notifications are going out and you guys are showing up knowing it's time to rock and roll. So I hope you're having a good day yourself. I hope you had a pretty all right Easter weekend. Painting the wrist guards here, same color. And then we'll go ahead and do pommel as well. Did I get to see Sydney this weekend? I get to see her all the time. She's literally right here next to me. <laughs> She's right here today. She's got her entire, almost entire warlord army in front of her. She's got, I've been assembling stuff. We've got two more, um, no, we haven't moved at all, Max. Or rather, Chris. But yeah, no, we haven't moved yet or anything. But she's just up here. She's uh, like the only human being that's been around us since the beginning, right? Of all the quarantining and stuff. So like, we're, it's just part of the deal. She's the only human that we've been around. Other than the guy that saved me on the side of the road and then random Walmart employees that walk way too close, so. All right, so I'm finishing up the coverage here on the armor. 
I do need to double check the shield to make sure I'm not um, going to do the wrong color on it, but... I like this color because it's a really solid gold, I feel like. I mean, I know it's ancient bronze, but... Uh, I like it because you can highlight it up with a gold, you can highlight it up with rose gold, it looks amazing. So we did silver, okay, so for the shield, we're going to do everything um, silver except the inside which is just right here. Just this little window part right there. So that is everything that we're using ancient bronze for. So we're gonna wait a second while that dries and we'll go back with a secondary coat just to make sure I have a really nice uh, base to work from. And then we're gonna start washing everything down, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, while we're waiting for that to dry, let's just do all of our metallics. So I'm gonna grab honed steel. Painter's choice, if you don't have honed steel at home, you can just use any silver you would like. Um, honed steel, of course, is part of the core set of colors that we released before we started doing all of these. There we go. Thanks to everybody that was hanging out watching uh, this weekend as well, working on the Moonstone paint job. Um, so Thursday and Friday, you're gonna see me working on more Moonstone stuff as well as I finish up that gig. Um, Tom, the guy that owns the game, uh, did say there was quite the nice reception this weekend while I was working on that and they sold some stuff. Um, so that's really, really good. I'm glad that they could uh, move some rule books and some products. So big thanks to anybody that bought some of that stuff as well. It's a great game, fun miniatures. So we're going to paint the wings here on the shield in silver, so that's what I'm doing now. Of course, tomorrow and Wednesday we're going to be working on Craterix still until it is finished. Um, then I have all kinds of stuff we can work on, like I can work on Warlord Army stuff. Um, I actually have a project for ReaperCon that I haven't announced at all um, that is... Uh, that involves um, Warlord, so we could work on that. There's some conversion work be needed done. There's all kinds of work that I need to do, so we can do that. Um, we, we have all kinds of options, really, so. Make sure I paint the edge of the shield, of course. Okay, and then let's go ahead and do, I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. Yeah, 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 so this right here, we're gonna do this top edge and down the side of the kneecap in the silver. Oops, sorry, I need to reapply it. I just pulled it off the second I applied it. And then the little riveted block here on the shoulder, and then it's also on the other shoulder, so make sure you grab that too. Then we've got the blade left, and then we can go back and reapply our base coat on the rest of the armor. Like so. Tomorrow's going to be a busy day. It'll be another four or five hours of, of streaming, because I've got, obviously, our Miniature Monday stream, and then before that, I've got a private lesson, so it's going to take up another two hours. Saturday, I felt really tired just because I streamed for what six hours six hours of talking Ooh, it'll take it out of you and then what was Saturday when we played Betrayal Legacy mm -hmm. yeah and we went home and played the prologue to Betrayal Legacy that was fun took took a while to figure out what was happening I feel like the rules weren't as precise like I feel like they left out just like a couple things that would have made life a bit easier but we got it, we got it figured out, so. All right, so now that we've got that, I'm gonna go back in with the ancient bronze and just make sure I've got a, a really solid coat. Yeah, Friday night we did an Easter egg hunt around here. That was pretty fun. Easter egg hunt for adults. So uh, inside some of the eggs, it said like shotgun a beer, take a shot, etc., etc. So it was really funny. Do the chicken dance was one of them.
All right, so I'm just going back over everything. One final coat here of the ancient bronze. I just want really nice coverage before we wash everything down. And then of course we gotta make sure everything dries this time around completely because if we apply a wash, it's going to turn into a complete mess. So we just wanna make sure we're ready to go. Big thanks again to everybody that is doing their Amazon shopping through my link first. That is a big help. Um, and I know you guys are doing it because I can literally go and check and see uh, all the stuff that is going through that link. And you guys are really, really helping me out with that, of course. Any, anytime somebody does that, I usually get about 3 to 5% of the total cost of all the items that you purchase, which can be amazing if you're doing gigantic purchases, whatever the case is. So big, big, big thanks to everybody that has been doing that. You can, of course, check that out um, by going to minipainting.studio or there you go. Thank you for that. They dropped it into the chat as well. So definitely a big thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I put trash in some of the eggs as well, just for fun. All right, so waiting on the metal to dry there before we move forward, I guess we can go ahead and, uh, what did I do for that? We just, okay, so what we're gonna do here, we'll go ahead and do the, um, his little lizard loin cloth. Lizard loin linen, there you go. Say that one 10 times fast. So, I'm gonna go ahead, okay, that's a bunch of goo coming out. I'm gonna go, <laughs> shake this. Okay, we got it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get some of this camo green out there on the palito. There it is. And then I'm just gonna take any color. I don't really care. I'm an animal. So I'm gonna take, what is this? Olive shadow. I just want something to darken it. And I didn't shake that enough either. You can tell these paints have been sitting for a literal week <laughs> since last miniature Monday. There we go. Now we got colors that will play nice a little bit. I just want it to be kind of dark. And that will probably do it for us right here. There we go. I'm gonna apply this over his lizard loin linen. It's probably gonna to need to take two coats because I had too much of the host medium in it, which very clearly it needs it. But we're gonna wash this down along with everything else, so it's no big deal. Don't worry about it too much there. When I did it the first time, I felt like it was kind of phoned in, so we're gonna give it a little bit more work than I did on the sort of, what, promo paint job? I don't really know how to put it. The, the, the kit paint? Is that, is that the best way to think about it? I don't know. But... There we are. I'm just moving all the paint around to make sure that it is nice and even. It doesn't look too amazing. Not a big deal. Let it dry, come back, revisit it. We're just trying to kill time as we wait to make sure that metal is completely dry. Okay. There we go. I feel like this brush is being so weird and I'm not sure what the issue is. I don't know, it's just behaving differently than I would expect. All right, so checking our metal application here. I do believe it's pretty much dry. Let me see. Oh yeah, is it? I'm taking my brush, oh, no it's not, see? There we go. Still got some ancient bronze that is not wanting to cooperate. Now then, in between the legs there is also a part of this cloak, whatever stuff. So I am gonna shove some color in there. That's just unfortunate placement. For us, at least, because uh, we can't, I mean, you can cut the arm off if you'd like to, I suppose. What I'm gonna do is just get some color in there and then we're just gonna shade it way down with a noir black towards the end. So that way you, you feel like you didn't leave uh, an ugly, whatever, ugly mess waiting for you, so. All right. 
see how we're looking up here. Nope, still wet. I'll grab the airbrush. We'll, oh, my airbrush is disassembled in the cleaner. So yeah, we're just waiting. So, as always, if you guys have questions, anything like that, feel free to drop them in the chat and I can help you out. Got a text message. All right, let me see what this is right here, real quick. Sorry. Okay, so what we can actually do as well, uh, since we're just sort of base coating everything, may, may as well do it. We can go ahead and take our bright turquoise color. We can base coat the body. Put it right here on the palette. There we go. Another text message. What is your preferred method for painting bone? Uh, you mean like the texture? Or did you leave off an S and you mean bones? Like bone bones minis or bone, like a bone on a miniature, so. Clarify that for me if you can. But in the meantime, I'm gonna start base coating all of the parts that we're gonna have be lizard flesh. Remember to hit the back of the calf. That little spot right there. Bone like skeletons? Well, it really just depends, but I always go, I mean, build it sort of like an ivory. So, uh, let me see. Uh, last weekend when we did the Patreon class, so like this guy right here, he has a bone staff. So, I mean, that's kind of an example, I guess, but it, it's more red because it works with the rest of the palette. So, but that, that Patreon class is free. Um, we did that free this weekend, so you can check that out on, on my page, on the YouTube, on the Twitch. It should be everywhere, so... But yeah, and, and whenever, like, so it's kind of a tricky question with me to ask, like, how do I do blank? Like, if it's not a technique, so if you're asking me, how do you paint wood or whatever, there is no blanket answer because it it's different every time, right? Like, it's always going to depend on all the other colors I'm using, the miniature, the situation, the lighting. I mean, I could give an easy answer and just say, probably brown, but that's not necessarily, like, the right answer, so... All right, we'll make sure you, uh, wait, sorry, back of the calf here. And I guess we got the toes. Part of the toes, too, are covered, so really I'm just putting this color here so we can uh, touch it back up later. And then the head. All right. This color is so great, this turquoise. Really awesome coverage. Good pigment. Okay. Hey, time, it's already thinned. All right, so. Seeing as how this this uh, base coat's pretty much dry, I'm gonna go back in. Just make sure I've got good coverage. Yeah, so anytime I, I move in like that on a color, it's because I have the water in the brush. So if you see me just like smush a color, it's because I have water in the brush already.
All right, so we're ready to rock and roll. Now then, for the wash on the bronze, one thing that I wanted to do is make it really red. So we're gonna end up using Auburn Shadow first and then mixing it down with another color. I need to move to a new area on palette land here. Hey, Red Wolf. So, making a wash out of this, making sure I've got that three to one ratio there. There it is. And that's still a little bit heavy, but we're almost there. That should do it. There we are. That's perfect consistency. All right, so we're going to start applying this all over the armor here. Now that on the broader areas, I'm gonna go back with just water to push it out of the way. Like this. Because I obviously want that to be more reflective to begin with. You can see why this color palette works so well, right? The auburn shadow is very orange compared to the turquoise that we're using for the skin. Those two colors bounce off each other really, really well. Putting it in here. No, it's not rusty at all. It's just we're adding shadow to it. So if it was uh, brass or bronze anyway, the rust wouldn't be this color. It would be a verdigris color. So it'd be like green or light blue, like sky blue. All we're doing is adding dimension to the armor current. really well as you can see and then we're gonna add another color on top of this to then bring in shadow but you can see on the back right that wash is already drying right there in that middle panel so you can just tell what we're doing we're just trying to give it lots of nice color and then we'll highlight everything back up all right so up next you're going to need oh sorry I forgot the leg I'm back, by the way, Josh. Hey. I have Just wanted to let you... Justin has returned. This thing is starting to look uh, pretty badass, but... Thank you, thank you. I love the, uh, the skin color. It's pretty, pretty bright. Pretty bright skin. All right, so... I was, uh... I had some mac and cheese, Max Powers. All right, sorry. Go ahead, Josh. You know, it was great when you were gone, when I could talk without being interrupted, but it's okay. Uh... <laughs> Everyone needs an ad. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so we're waiting on this to dry. The next color that you're going to, um, next color that you're gonna need is gonna be your noir black, of course. So clean off the brush here. I ordered an airbrush this weekend. How do you prime inside? Are you relying on your ventilator or do you have a spray? Uh, you mean ventilator, like what? You mean like a mask? So you, so you need a vented spray booth. If you're just spraying an airbrush into a box, all of that paint is then going to come back out into you, um, into your face, and it's gonna go and cover every surface like dust, except it's not dust, it's paint. So that's why you wanna be able to vent an airbrush out and away. Um, I don't really airbrush on camera that often for that purpose, right? I don't have a camera set up in the spray booth. I don't want to. I don't want to put equipment in a spray booth, right? That sits behind me in a window, um, and then anytime I do airbrush on camera, like I would never prime anything out here because it would just go everywhere. Um, usually it's tinting or with stuff that's really really thin, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, you need a, a spray booth for sure. You can make your own, um, or you can just buy uh, a booth like I did. You can check it in the Amazon shop, the one that I bought and that I use every day. I've had it for four or five years. Works just fine. It's kind of broken and gross and, and crappy, but the, the actual, the venting portion of it works just fine. So 
Um, you can see that on there. They're pretty much all the same style. Uh, a couple different companies um, make pre-made ones. They all work the same. They're all around the same uh, price point. You can make your own, but I'm, I'm of the opinion, why would I waste time because I see my time as being worth money, right? So it's like I saved $20 here, but then I spend eight hours building it. That's definitely not worth it. So, but we are waiting for that to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and get the Noir Black out onto the palette. This ASMR for you. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> yeah, I knew that would sound pretty rough. All right. Now then, I'm gonna make a wash out of Noir Black on its own. You're gonna see that happening on the palette cam here. I don't need a lot of it, as you can tell. We're gonna mix it with the actual Auburn shadow, but we're not doing that right this second because this color is going to go on top of the skin and the silver bits. So I'm gonna go ahead and start washing this on top. Oh, what's funny is uh, this weekend, I realized for those of you that watch uh, Bon Appetit, those videos on YouTube, they're using the same music service that I use. <laughs> so I was watching one of their videos and it started playing one of the songs that we were listening to like the last time I streamed and I was like, what is happening? <laughs> it's like, I can't escape the music. There we go. I wanted to shade that down a little bit more. Remember as well to put the shade in between the legs um, in the five to one ratio. No, it's never a five to one ratio. Um, it's always typically three to, three to one. Glazes are typically two to one and all paint is one to one. It's three to one, keep it simple. Simple, simple, simple. All right, so that's still wet, so I'm gonna kind of chill out on that. But on the skin, we're still going to apply the wash. So wherever that turquoise color is, so like that was way too intense, so I'm going back with water. Help dull it out a bit. Sorry, hat club. Hat club. There we go, that looks better. calf taking the wash putting it on the blade as well as you can see grab a little bit more easy peasy and then the little pauldron pieces also need some wash So now we can go ahead and uh, mix the current wash with uh, the Auburn Shadow. I'm gonna add a little bit more here. 
if my watch was less pigmented on the sword than I would appreciate. You can tell too, I'm moving it around in the body here. So, a leather, uh, nope, <laughs> nope, that's metallic paint. So, we've applied that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix this in with the wash that we had previously. You can see this here. And it's gonna be about 50-50, so it's gonna be a nice sort of ruddy dark brown. And this will be our, our secondary shade color on top of the armor before we do any highlighting. Now that I've, I saw somebody post the uh, same, same question twice, let me see. Uh, how do you clean the brush? Uh, when you dip your whole brush into the water, is it damaging the bristles? No, I'm just putting it in the water and then swishing it. It's not hitting anything, I'm just... Well, now it is hitting the sides of my, my paint. My, here, look, I mean, this is, look, right here. This is all I do, you ready? It goes in about that far, and I just go, there you go. No special technique. It comes right out. Now, sometimes I do obviously get uh, paint in the ferrule a little bit, but I get that cleaned out after the session, whatever I'm doing. So, our wash here is pretty much dry, so we can go back in. So in the deeper areas is where I'm gonna be paying attention to applying this, so in the grooves in between the armor. This wash also can go on top of our green. Now I applied it much too thick there, of course. I'm gonna go back in with water. There we go. That's a lot better. I'll just add more water proper to it, there we go. Because I added the uh, Noir Black without adding water, which of course ruins uh, the ratio of pigment in there. Damaging the glue. What glue? Sorry, Time Buster. I don't know. <laughs> There's no glue in the brush, so. <laughs> All right, so. Actually, that does bring up kind of a question I have. How do the, how do the, um, bristles, I guess, stay in the paint. Sorry, I can't hear you. What'd you say, Justin? So how do the bristles stay in the, uh, the barrel? So these get crimped. Um, so there's, oh. yeah, they get crimped and then it gets glued right here. This is the only place that glue typically is attached. They put glue right here and then they crimp it. And then these just live here. So like you could rip the bristles out. The bristles probably go a lot further into the ferrule than you uh, would imagine. I see. All right. Well, we uh, we both learned something, Time Buster. Because I was wondering that myself. I was like, I wonder how those go in there. It always, and it depends on the brand and the manufacturer as well. You know, if it's a handmade brush, it's a different process. If it's a machine-made brush, different process. Uh, da Vinci brushes, I think, are handmade. So I think it's pretty hard to cheat the Sable system. Even though there are plenty of fakes out there. Is the brush counterfeit counterfeiting market really like, uh, is that a thing? Um, it isn't so much counterfeiting as it is just like lying to people. So, you know, there will be companies uh, that kind of like, there are companies that uh, come out at like a Kickstarter and they'll say that they are, you know, oh, these are miniature painting brushes, fine brushes, da 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 da, but literally it's just cheap, cheap, cheap material. And then all they're doing is white labeling it and putting their branding on it from China. So, you know, like ghost brushes are a good example. Those are nothing but uh, nylon brushes, but it was marketed towards miniature painters. And they'll, you know, that's not a secret either. Like literally, if you if you go, aren't these just cheap nylon brushes from China? They're like, yes. <laughs> so, you know, it just kind of depends, but they advertise them in a way that makes them seem like they're real. Um, then you can also find things that will be listed that say Sable brush, but Sable literally will be in quotation marks. So there are brands on Amazon that even do that. Um, and they're, they're not real Sable. Um, you know, sometimes it's like squirrel hair, 
Um, they'll say sable in, in parentheses, and then they'll say natural hair, bristle, it'll be, you know, rat, it'll be mouse, it'll be weasel, just anything other than an actual uh, weasel, so. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. There's a lot of fake stuff out there, and, and it isn't because of miniature painting. Uh, the issue is, like, if you're a, a watercolorist and you need a gigantic brush, well, there are brushes that literally are, like, you know, the entire tail of a, of a, of a weasel. So it's gonna be super expensive, $300, whatever, a brush. Um, so obviously people that want something quality but can't afford that are gonna look elsewhere. And so they'll be like, well, if this is a gigantic natural bristle brush that only cost me 30 bucks instead of 300, I'm definitely gonna buy it. But instead of the natural hair they are expecting, they are uh, rocking out using, you know, a rat or whatever, whatever it is. So someone's grandma cutting their hair and dyeing it. You know what I mean? Like there, there's no way to really know, but. There definitely aren't like new sable companies appearing in the wild because how are you sourcing sable farms that aren't already used for it? You see what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of like you have to have the animals first, then the brush. So how are you inventing a new brush without the animals? So. All right, but I think we are now just waiting for washes to dry. Yeah, if you're doing a goblin army, I agree, Carwin. That's that's very appropriate to just use uh, possum hair brushes or rat hair brushes. Because yeah, when it comes to natural hair bristles, for people that think. Uh, you know, there's like glue right here. That's going to break down a natural material. So you don't want to do that. Now, I mean, a company could do that if they wanted your brush to like go bad and then you always have to buy a new one, right? Like I'm sure that, I'm sure there's some, some company out there that has their construction method in a way that things last a certain amount of time and you got to buy new ones. I mean, that's just kind of how, that's capitalism for you, right? That's just being smart and selling a product you got to replace, but when it comes to at least Da Vinci, Windsor and Newton now is a little bit notorious. People get really bad brushes from them off and on, so their quality control is pretty weird. Raphael doesn't have that problem. So there are, there are a lot of different companies that don't really have issues with the quality control, but other than this one random hair that we've had <laughs> since day one of opening this brush, I mean, this guy's still just as good as uh, the first time we used it, so. But we are now almost there. You can see all that great tone that we built into the armor. And I wouldn't even necessarily consider this weathering the armor um, unless you wanted to leave it this way. This is really just working in all the tones and shadows that you want before you know moving your way up. One thing that's interesting about this as well, so we're using a Bones MSP line and you can tell the water, actually you can't tell from that angle. I wonder if you can tell from a different angle, let's see. There we go. So in the palette cam, do you notice how that's like kind of, it looks like it's been muted or there's like white mixed in? So what's interesting is that's actually the pigment, <clears throat> but not the metallic flake. These use a the silica flake because it's uh, much like shinier than the other paint colors. Or sorry, no, this is an MSP, but this is the uh, color that's actually mixed in versus if you look at it up top, that's the mica fleck that gives it the color that it has. So if you're putting water in with your metallic paints, it's actually going to separate them so that they don't work as well. Boop. But... That's why I always go back and add more. So because of that, I'm gonna add more to the palette before we start our highlighting. There we go. There we go. So now I'm just getting this thin on the wet palette. I'm not actually thinning it down. And we're gonna go back and start highlighting up the armor. So I'm gonna move in a little bit closer here for you. All right, we're gonna start baking in our little highlights here at the top, moving down the center of the back armor. So you can see which parts I'm highlighting. Look at that, see that awesome reflection? Same thing here, pushing this up. Doing the edge of the armor as well. It's 
sort of the center of this piece above the cloth. There we are. So how would carbon absorb and hold water the same way? I guess that's what I'm wondering. So moving back in here, I mean, aren't we all carbon based? Well, if you cook me long enough, but. I mean. <laughs> so now moving in here, I'm gonna do right above where it connects to that next plate and then the edge of the plate. So you'll see what I'm, I mean here. I'm gonna go right above the edge of the other plate like this. And then the edge of the plate. Do the same thing here. And then of course the rivets. <laughs> and then this area got heavily, heavily washed down, but that's not too big of a deal. Just highlight it up across the back of the calf like so. Capillary action in the microtubes. Well, Bishop, you know, if that ever becomes a real thing, sure. But I highly doubt we will be there anytime soon. All right, back up here. Starting on the plating on the shoulder. building in our highlights. What's nice too is the undercoat here with the auburn shadow, the wash that we applied. That's gonna make the warmth in the pigment and the MycoFlex or, or yeah, MycoFlex uh, bounce back and appear a lot warmer, which is very cool. That's why we, we chose to wash it down the color that we did. But you can see all the nice reflection building back on top of the ancient bronze armor. So moving our way forward to the front, highlighting up right around the neck there and then letting it taper where that shadow naturally exists and then doing the edge. Same thing again, I didn't get the best coverage, so I'm gonna go back and build it in, just like that. And that's a nice little highlight. Arm getting a little bit of attention here. There we are. This side, I'm gonna do a similar highlight across the top like this, and then down around the edge. Like that. Uh, yeah, this is true metallic metal, since you're shading metallic paint. That's pretty much the definition. Pretty much. A little bit more than just a wash is really what delineates true metallic. Because if you just kind of wash and dry brush on top, sure, but metallic objects, unless they're surrounded by whatever the color of the wash color is, are gonna have some other colors mixed in. Moving around to the back, we're gonna do the same principles we did on the front, not really highlighting up the entire panel. So you can see we're leaving some of that shadow in and then highlighting up the rivet, the bolt, the nut, whatever it is. Phrasing, Justin, come on, man. All right, so we keep going around. <laughs> I like the instant, my bad, though, that was good. 
And then down the middle edge of the pauldron here. So uh, never use water on metallic. So the, the best way to think of it, so whenever I'm painting, my brush always has water in it, but not the metallic. So that's why eventually the metallic that I'm working with um, will start to separate just because my brush is wet, but the tip of the brush that I pull from, um, you know, is only pulling the pigment. So like right now, if we look at this brush, uh, my brush is totally wet, you can tell, because I'm rubbing it right there on the edge of my thumb. See how it's wet? And then there's, <laughs> there's the metal paint that I just accidentally rubbed away. And then because my brush is wet, if I want to taper it, right, or make it super thin, I just continue to move it because the water is in my brush. So that's the trick. And that's why having a, a good brush makes a world of difference because you can't really get that type of control with um, certain synthetic materials like nylon, et cetera. So. Back on the top of the neck here, I'm gonna go back in and highlight it. But yeah, by making sure that my brush is always wet like that, I will have a very malleable and bendable brush, meaning it's very easy to work with, which is what I always want. I, you know, I want the brush to be flexible, move back and forth wherever I'm planning it to, et cetera, et cetera. Now then, I'm gonna go back in on the inside part here, highlight this up completely. There we are. So right now I'm just looking for anywhere that I have missed. I'm sure there's plenty up around the shoulders. Yeah, we got all this to do. So we'll go ahead and keep layering it in. Now then moving in to the chest, let me change this now that we're not trying to get that weird angle. Here we are. I'm just gonna do the tops of the plates, just that top edge. Your eye will, will read the rest of the metallic that's there. You don't need to like super highlight it up or anything. Okay, going to the edge here. Sorry, the side of his body. Going to the edge of his body. Here we are. Bottom portion here of this little plate. <clears throat> All right, back on to these boys again. So we're gonna do the bottom of the concave, I guess is the best way to describe it. So the bottom half of the plate that is not hidden in shadow and then the edge of the plate. So go ahead and do that again here. Top edge of the plate on this one, on this one, and then we'll go and do the concave portion. Right here, right there. That way you get that double reflection, see that? How they shine right up across the edge. Uh, I do not have Reaper Pearl, so. I typically also don't mix metallic colors. So if I have like a dark color I'm using, like a like adamantium black, right, which is a super dark metallic black, I wouldn't mix a metallic to make it brighter. I would just layer the brighter metallic on top. So Okay, what are we missing? Oh, all right, so now we're still working on the kneecap. Top of the leg. I don't even know, that sounded so, top of the leg. Top of the leg to ya. Top of the leg to ya. All right, let's work on this. What's cool about the bottom of the, uh, so if you'll notice, right? What's fun about the bottom of the sword here is that you get 
the red, so that auburn shadow, and then also the wash that we applied in between. So you get a lot of that tonal shift without having to do anything else other than reapply your base color, which is cool. All right, so on the back side here, anything that we missed, so the top of the plates, top of the wrist guard here. And then the sword. All right. Okay, so I actually need to I'm just gonna overbrush the detail there. There we go, you can see that popped out immediately. Did you just leave the room to do that? That's funny. And pushing in the highlight on that top windowed portion of the shield, there you go. more weapons for swaps, well, there's an entire Reptus weapon kit you can buy. It's just metal. They have a lot, I mean, if you've never just searched weapon kit on the Reaper website, there's a ton of them. There are so many kits. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is take our honed steel, whatever silver color you used originally, we're gonna highlight up the other bits of the metal. Get that back on the palette. Didn't have much to begin with anyway. Come on, where are you at? Oh my gosh, how am I not able to, there we are, that's funny. All right, so going back on top of the knee here. Highlighting nice and bright, see, nice and clean. Same thing with the points on the shield here. I wanna leave some of that wash in there, so really I'm only looking at the edges for highlights. And then the parts, point, part, are these words? And then the edges of the points again. Are these words? I'm just leaving the interior portion of the shield that really dark color, because what else would it be? So. Painter's choice, up to you. I'm gonna highlight up a little bit under the arm, but not much on the edge there. Man, I could say I could say such a controversial thing about those Bones 3 weapon sprues. <laughs> but we won't, we won't start drama. It's not what we do around here, okay? All right, so now taking the same color, we're gonna highlight up the little silver part of the plate on the shoulders. So I'm gonna try and single out the different areas and leave the rivets separated as well. Highlighting up the edges, everything else involved, but still leaving some of the shadow. There we go. And same thing on the other one, of course. Then I need to super clean the brush. A 
Because they're made in a way that they're hard to package and they're in the warehouse? No, that would not be the controversial answer. There we go. Wasn't overly thrilled with that highlight. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the shield itself. Highlight up the tops of the wings here. Oh right, I gotta clean, there's like a little, a little edge. All right, so now we're gonna go down the ribbing. Uh, so Max, the weapons that they have are high impact polystyrene, so they're not made of bones. So just doing the edges here of all the different parts of the wings as we highlight them up. Oop, popped him off his base. Oop, we'll just hold it. And then highlighting up the center portion of the wing, so the, the skin, the membrane, but only down towards the bottom, not all the way. All right, so now we can work on our sword here. Gonna go ahead and do full coverage on the top of the sword and then focus in on the edge once we move down the side. Like so. Same with the other edge. and highlighting up some of the bits in the middle. So you can see that there. On the side, I'm gonna highlight just the top part of the side here. As you can see, we still got a, a shade transition. And then same thing on this side. Focus in coverage here on this sort of curved part on the top, and then only the edge as we move the way down. Same on the opposite side. And then some texture on the details in the center. And there you go. All right, so now we can start on the skin. Now what's interesting is I, I like the coloration on our armor here a lot better than what I had originally. Like I said too, I did the other two at the exact same time, so I didn't really know how dark to make it. It was just a little bit different, but you can see the difference. I knew I needed way more red, and I feel like we, we knocked it out of the park on the red on this armor. I think it helps a lot more, sells it more as not just sort of your, your typical armor. I feel like I may have gone and highlighted this up as well with our ancient gold, so let me see. Oh, it didn't look like metal at all this entire time? Amazing, you would think using a metallic paint would probably indicate that, but I'm, I'm no expert here. 
All right, so we're going to use our, I think it's antique gold, uh, but I gotta figure out what that is because I have moved it on my palette like a smart boy here. So, oh, here it is. All right, so antique gold's a part of our base set. So, getting some of this out on the palette. I forgot that was the last step that I did was highlight it up once more. All right, so that's where we're going to apply it. Same place in the areas. And of course I had, so that's, I always need to make sure I, I remove the excess water. So I touched the brush and water went everywhere. So that was my mistake. Typically, I know I don't show it all the time. You guys know that I do it. I always just rub the brush and rotate it like that. I didn't do that that time around. So that was almost a disaster. All right, now we're ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna use the gold to highlight up just the bright points here on the armor. So center here, the top of the pauldron. And then the plates on the pauldron on the highest point. You can see it adds another, another touch here. All right, I have a Arthur hair stuck on the finger. There we go. Highlighting up the same spot on the other pauldron. Top of the wrist armor here. So I'm gonna outline some of the stuff on the edges here. So the bottom of the armor, I'm gonna use the gold. Help brighten that up as well. You can see the difference it makes. And then the tops of the little leggings. Make those shine as well. Moving over to the front. Applying the gold only to this top row highlight that we applied on this pauldron following along the shoulder the opposite pauldron same idea same area with the antique gold and then the plates as well there we are you can see how shiny it is now that we added that in yeah adding this on top really brought out all of that auburn shadow that we washed in Thought it looked a bit dull compared to the other one. Now they should be very similar, just a little bit more red on this guy. Which is what I figured we were missing in the first place, so. There we go. All right, so now we'll compare the two. Now that we have the actual highlight color on the armor. So, there we are. So now we've got matching highlight colors. Yeah, now they look the same. The guy on the right, of course, not having as much of the auburn shadow, which is very obvious on the left-hand one. So that's pretty cool. All right, now then, I'm gonna back out a little bit as we begin to knock out the detailing on the scales. So the scales are relatively simple. We're gonna go back in with the base color, and then we're gonna add in Bethalian Chitin for the highlight. Simple, simple. So, of course, we're taking the bright turquoise and then Bethalian Chitin if you don't have that. Which camera's blurry? What are you talking about? <laughs> My camera's not blurry. <laughs> you guys are blaming me for things that aren't real. <laughs> I'm gonna start ignoring you. All right, so.
adding in more of our bright turquoise to where we had it previously on the palette. There we go. Yoink, there we are. And then we need the Bethalian Chitin, I'll put that out as well. There we go. All right, so. This time around, we're only gonna be applying just that base color. Making sure we're focusing, of course, up to the nearest shadow edge, which this sculpt is a little bit strange, right? Because we don't have eyes, we don't have anything like that. So we're just going to sort of follow along the contours of the shapes to make sure that we're applying it in the right area. So you can follow along at home, following it too. All right, so. Adding the color back onto every individual scale before doing any other highlighting, of course. We just need to start separating everything back out with our base color. So, there are no eyes. See, there are no eyes on the miniature. It's just a very heavy brow. Probably a conversion to bones material though. This miniature is available um, in metal. So maybe the metal version has eyes. This guy does not currently. But for those of you that are on the Patreon, you know that I'm on the No Eyes Club most of the time for tabletop level painting, which is what we're doing today. So move this back out a little bit. There we are. It's a little bit too close to my, my hand. I'm afraid I'm gonna hit the camera. All right. So now we are ready, uh, well, we'll do the uh, tiny amount of flesh here. Sorry, I, forget. I always forget the cap. What's funny is I took the photos of these for the package and I forgot to highlight up the calf sections, which see, I forgot this one too. <laughs> it's funny that I do it back to back like that. There we go. Now the claws, I think you probably could do in a like bone color. That's probably what we'll do. I think the first time around, I did them, uh, whoop. did them like, uh, let's see. I did the gold color, so we'll just do it separately. But I'm gonna add a brush tip full of our Bethalian Chitin. And I'm gonna add two brush tip fulls, there we go. To start our highlight color here. All right, let's, uh, let's see. Highlighting on the tops of our objects where our highlights would, ra would be raised. You can see me starting to build it in, in where the tear ducts should be, top of the brow, and then individually starting to highlight up all these little scales. What's nice about these scales is that they're pretty much the width of the brush tip, so it shouldn't be too difficult, to you, or difficult for you to do. So, this side, we're gonna go right up underneath the brow. 
top of the nose, top of the mouth, side of the mouth, top of the brow, and then the other scales as well. Taking the highlight color, I'm going to do the knuckles on the hand, like so. And then follow it down from the base of the hand going up to the knuckle like this. Build in that highlight. Same thing on this side, we'll do the knuckles and then the tips of the fingers. There we go. Same thing on this hand, knuckles, finger, knuckles, fingertip, knuckle, fingertip, top of the thumb. Relatively simple. And then we'll do a little bit of that calf there, right at the top. I'm not gonna mess with the feet. Top of this calf. There we go, highlighting that down. All right, so now we're ready to highlight out further. Taking more of the Bethalian Chitin. We have sort of this nice, lighter, a little bit turquoisey sky blue color. I'm gonna actually clear out the brush completely to get a better tip. There we go. And then going into these focused areas like the tear ducts. Oh, need a little bit more Bethalian shit and that jump wasn't bright enough. There we go. Just like that. Top of the lip there, top of the nose. Top of the brow, top of the brow to ya. <laughs> Onto the other scales. Now then, the scales here are a little bit muddled in some mold line. So I'm just kind of highlighting these top bits. I don't really know what they are because it's kind of impossible to see. On the side edge though, we can see a lot clearer. So we'll go ahead and do the tops of these. There we are. Nose on this side, tear duct, top of the lip, and then we're gonna go in where the eye would be. Highlight that up as well. Opposite edge, highlight that up. Top of the mouth, I've got some mold line. And there we are. So back this guy up a little bit. Yeah, nice, definitely pleased with that. I'm gonna keep adding a little bit more to some of these other back scales that were neglected. So, and then onto the hands. I wanna make sure I'm close here. Okay, I went a little bit brighter, so we'll do that again after this step. Dusting the knuckles, the very small highlight. Tips of the fingers. Moving on to the other hand. Tips of the fingers and then the knuckle. Really, I guess just the joints in general, so you can see more on this hand. And the knuckles, there we go. Back on the back of the hand. Here we are, I'm not really gonna highlight up the top of the calf there because it's further down on the body. Wouldn't really make as much sense. Adding in a little bit more Bethalian Chitin for final highlight layer only going to our brightest points. So point on the brow here, side of the brow, side of the scales here on the side of the face, like that. Whoop, hat club. 
top of the nose, right there, the center portion where the tear duct would go down the side of the nose on the top of the mouth. I'm highlighting that. And then just some of these brighter points on top of these scales, like so. There we go, now it's matching the other guy. Other side of the face, same idea, top of the nose, tear duct area, lip, eye, brow, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, shoulders, ease, knees, elbows. <laughs> All right, so let's compare the two. Skin is actually like our highlight pattern better on this guy on the left. It's always a little bit better the second time around, I feel like. So I'm gonna clean out the brush. All right, so what we're left with, of course, is his cloak. We didn't really work with it last time, so we'll just highlight it up a little bit. Highlight it up a little bit. So I'm gonna need some of our camouflage green. For those of you wearing headphones, how does that sound? Oh, <laughs> as I punch my mic, I'm sorry guys, how that hurt. The Yeti is not meant to be punched. All right, so we got that color mixed well. I'm gonna mix it back in with some of our darker color here though. I don't want it to be pure camouflage green. You can see this over here. Jacob, what's going on, man? There we go, now we're, at, now we're at a color I'm happy with. We'll do a little glove test. You can see kind of like a muddy green. And we'll go ahead and start highlighting up the other parts of the cloak here. There we go. And a little bit brighter camouflage green just for the edges of everything. go. We'll go down these edges here. A little bit into the shadow area. There we are. A little bit more right here just because the volume kind of builds up in the claw. And a little bit right here as well. I'll trail this down actually. And down at the bottom. All right, so other than the base that is up to y'all, remember we used the stuff from Wicked Elf Miniatures to do all of our jungle basing this kit. I believe that's it. Let's compare and contrast here. Whoop, whoop, there we go. My uh, screw was being wobbly, there we go. So Comparing the two, I left the inside of the shield dark on ours rather than, I think I just did the ancient bronze shaded down first time around. Everything else looks relatively the same. We used more of the auburn shadow on the armor. That's why it's a little bit more red on the left-hand side. You can obviously tell that on that pauldron. Skin is looking the same, super great. We went brighter camouflage green on the cloak, but that is relatively it. So looking forward to seeing your paint jobs as always. Remember you can post them anywhere with the miniature Monday tag and John will start collecting those and having those available to show off. Actually, I'm gonna take some of this Auburn shadow real quick, mix it down and paint the straps like a good human. There we go. Now, now he's just not, now he doesn't just have a mysteriously floating shield, sort of. But beyond that, I can't wait to see it. Remember, next time around, we're gonna be painting 
uh, our hero. So we're gonna be painting the witch. Very excited about that. Some skin tones people aren't normally used to. Um, the only thing that'll be painter's choice for next week, of course, is the glowing effects. That'll be up to you. Any kind of pink, magenta, green, light blue, all of that stuff will be great. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna be utilizing, uh, obviously, spending most of the time on the skin tone. Looking forward to that. And then, of course, the last uh, episode that we'll be doing for the jungle kit it's going to be the big boy here. So working on what we did today, you can tell what we've done already. We did the uh, same wash and highlight process there, but we're gonna be doing individual scales uh, in a in a lot, lot more seriousness as we work our way down the tail and everything else on the big boss. So once again, thanks so much for hanging out with us uh, for Miniature Monday. I guess I'll show this one as well, right? This is the first one that we worked on, the Black Panther as well. I have seen even more of you painting up the male lion that came with it. Um, so that'll be cool as I see more of those come around and people are painting it black as well, which I think is really cool. Um, so big thanks for hanging out. Remember, you can still get the, I don't know if the kit is sold out actually. I know it was close to or it said it was. Uh, it, it'll most likely be restocked for those of you that missed out. Let me double check and see. Do, 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 do. I thought they put some in this weekend, didn't they? Uh, yes, they did. So there are some kits available for those. Who, oh, no, sorry. Uh, it looks like the only one that's available is February. Um, so if you want the February kit, which is still a fun kit, it's got the Crystal Golem, you can get those. But I'm assuming the April kit, as always, will be restocked. So definitely keep an eye out there if it is uh, something you're looking for. Um, remember again, you can check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash mini painting studio. We painted up um, this guy over the weekend. That was really fun. Next weekend, we have our um, $10 or higher tier advanced demo class. And then we'll be painting the stone lurker at the end of the weekend. And then if you wanna know any of the materials that I use, such as the brushes, anything like that, you can, in lighting, lights, everything, you can check that out on the Amazon shop as well. That has been, the link is always dropped in the chat. But beyond that, uh, Justin, do you have anything else for us this week? No, I don't think so. I think that's it. Perfect, so um, unless it's changed, am I still gonna be here Tuesday and Wednesday? So tomorrow and Wednesday? Uh, yes, actually. Um, well, actually, you and I will have a conversation about that after this, but yes, um, that is the plan for, you know, now. <laughs> okay, so yes, I will see you Tuesday and Wednesday still um, here on Twitch. We'll continue knocking out uh, the dragon. We're, we're probably gonna get close to finishing it. Um, really, right, the only stuff that we need to focus on intently is possible repairs here and there, and then working on the base. So. Definitely look forward to that. And then are we raiding anyone today? Yes, we are raiding Shoshi's minis. Very cool. Make sure, uh, tell Shoshi, Josh says you're old. It'll be perfect. We're friends, it's fine. She'll, she'll, oh, let, okay. she'll, let, to say. <laughs> she'll let me get away with it. She'll let me get away with it. But uh, anyway, she'll, she'll get a kick. But make sure you guys give her lots of love. And then, uh, yeah, we will see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Thanks, Carwin. Thanks, Thanks Sharky. Have a great day, guys. Keep being awesome. We'll see you later.